hello again. So I wanted to start this series a little earlier, but you know things get in the way. Um, so I'm starting a mission where I'm well. I'm trying to set up, find the right parts in set up configs if necessary to perform something pretty similar to a Mars Direct style mission. Um, so that includes a, a lot of hyper editing and config editing that isn't very interesting. So figure I'd skip as much of that and kind of make a series of videos where I'm addressing all the major challenges of, of this. So um, this is just uh, entry, descent, and landing, which is kind of the first problem. So I've used HyperEdit to get my craft here um, over oh, what is Hellas Basin, I think. Uh, it's been a while since I was doing this challenge. So uh, this is roughly in, in the neighborhood of the speed a craft would be coming from Earth in. Obviously, getting it to this point would be pretty difficult, um, but one of the easier parts of this challenge, I think, since it could be accomplished with existing tools. So let's see. So here's the craft I've built. Don't need to see carbon dioxide. Uh, it's got all kinds of interesting things going on with it. Um, so the first challenge is to slow down from this kind of Mars intercept velocity. So um, rather than, because Mars has an atmosphere, we can use the atmosphere to do that. And in a lot of my earlier testing, I didn't uh, make use of that fact. Uh, let me set, I think this is how I got it set, uh, shaped. There we go. Um, I just would put my craft in, in orbit while I was just figuring out some things. So uh, because Mars atmosphere is very thin, just a ballistic trajectory won't be enough. So uh, the reason I'm targeting this region, um, let me see if I can just quickly show it. Yes, good. So. I've set up scan set, so it shows this is a fairly low point on, on Mars, this, this basin here. Um, and you can customize that with scan set substantially. I'll probably show that off a bit more later. Um, so at about 130, so I'm coming in really fast. Um, right now I've just set myself up to hold uh, this retrograde position. So I've got these three, so these little solid motors for pushing away the heat shield uh, when I'm done. Not very much ablator in it, even though I'm hitting at high velocity just because the atmosphere is quite thin and that seems to be enough. I've got these little hypergolic um, controllers around the edge. Now I only have, I've got three, so one on left and right and one on the front. So that, having just something off the center of mass, you, you may have experience with re-entry mode um, of a manned capsule, so where the Apollo or Gemini um, in real solar system real, realism overhaul will pitch a little bit and so that causes it to generate some lift, and I'll show off that value. Whoa, God, what did I do? <laughs> okay, I, I just uh, quickly cut away the time I had to uh, talk. All right, then. So you'll see uh, LD value will change. Um, I'm going to just hold this position with RCS until, I, um, until the g-force here starts to increase. We're going to hit some pretty high g-forces. Um, there's a cool, um, if you use the dev version of MechJab, there's a cool tool that at some other point I think I will show off. Uh, it's really cool. It will show, um, I might see if I can just leave this open, but if it gets in my way I'll close it. Uh, it kind of distracts me. So let's see. Mark, reset. Uh, maybe not quite that much. So just show off the stats of the craft in a graphical form as I come in. Uh, but I think that's going to get in the way. Uh, yes, and I don't offhand recall exactly how to shrink it. Anyway, so you can see the heat shield starting to heat up. G-forces are coming up, so I've set it to this position. So this this is the off-center mass of my craft. So if I tell it to no longer hold pitch, it's going to start, you'll see it start to change pitch um, as it kind of angles down. So I'm getting more and more acceleration as I come closer. My original uh, periapsis was really low, uh, so we're going to hit some pretty high Gs as we come in. Uh, but this means we don't have to spend any fuel uh, to land something on Mars. Huh. Let's see. So here you can see my LD is coming up. It's not. It's not really high. Um, I've designed craft where it's as high as 0.35 by having more off-center mass, and I did that by in the VAB, um, you know, building everything and then taking the heat shield and actually shifting it just slightly over, which puts the payload itself a little off-center, uh, which works pretty well as well, but I haven't found a way in with FAR in the VAB to actually figure out what my LD is, but I mean, the higher it is, the better. Another worthwhile number to 
look at if you're trying to do this is your ballistic coefficient. Uh, again, I think the higher the better. I could be wrong. And don't worry about the negative sign here. That just it has to do with the orientation. Uh, so I'm watching my vertical speed because even though I'm hitting down into the atmosphere really hard, I am I'll just make sure I've still got some ablator. Up, up yeah. Yeah, just I've never run out of it in this situation. I'm not sure if that's entirely accurate, but you know, I'm only working out one challenge or optimizing one thing uh, at a time. Um, so my acceleration gets really high here, extremely high. The air gets, for Mars sake, for Mars's uh, situation, it gets really thick, even though as a fraction of Earth atmosphere, it's really small. Um, because I'm getting, uh, can you imagine being this close to the surface of Earth at this speed? You know, it, uh, you would get, uh, you'd have a ridiculous uh, amount of deceleration. So I usually don't aim for a point this low. So I'm always just experimenting. Uh, so I'm going to bounce effectively because I still have lots of speed. You can see I just became no longer um, having enough velocity to escape from Mars. Uh, so I'm going to bounce. So my vertical speed will... Oh, actually, it might also have to do with the fact that I have such a low LD. Um, so the higher that is, the more bounce you'll get. Like the more, um, as you bite into the atmosphere, as the, the more... Uh, atmospheric force you have on your craft, the more lift you'll generate, the higher this value is. And like I said, I've, I've flown craft where it's three times this high. And I, I do want it higher than I currently have it. Uh, hopefully I land. Uh, so this, you know, so there's kind of a some substantial difficulty between this step and the next step. So if I make another video, um, I might make an, a second video where I just have this part of things accomplished. But um, you want a little bit of LD, you want to bite into the atmosphere. So see, I'm still heading down, and that's just because I've used roll my, these roll thrusters to uh, make it so that um, this LD is working kind of in the opposite direction. So now I'm kind of keeping a close eye on time to impact. So now the fact that I'm angled a little bit is actually keeping this down. See, if I roll it, it's hard to roll because it's so heavy. Uh, and because the atmospheric pressure is like I'm under quite a bit of acceleration right now. I do want to bounce a bit, so let's see. So see if I roll to this position, now the lift is in the upwards direction, not left or right like I had it before. And because Hellas Basin is so big, I can hit the basin in general pretty easily. Um, but you'll get more value from uh, aerodynamic deceleration like this, whether it's with um, a lar an oversized heat shield or if you're using a balut, which is something I might show off later, or a, a normal parachute once you've come down to a lower speed. The thicker the atmosphere, the more value, the, the more deceleration you'll be getting from that. So here, I might not actually bounce. So with a bit of experience with designing these craft, and it will depend on how much, uh, how many, en how much engine power you have on your craft. Um, in this case, because I'm landing it in a, in a relatively light state. Um, and then I'm going to be filling it up with resource, with fuel I make using ISRU production, which I'll show off in a later video. I'm kind of making the code of that based on some scientific papers uh, for a mod called Real ISRU. You know, there'll be a number of links in the video. But I just need to start you know, showing as I'm putting this mission together, so it's just, so you actually see it, you know, kind of the, what challenges there are in, in trying to do something like this and how, um, how I'm going about addressing them. So if you see anything I'm trying to do, what seems like a weird way, and you know there's already a solution to it, by all means, you know, tell me. There's a, I don't want to kind of have to make it feel like I'm making all these things from whole cloth. I feel like a lot of it has, might have already been done. So by all means, if you if you see practical tools or mods or something for kind of helping in doing this and you know, landing on Mars in the real solar system, um, and let me know. Uh, so time to impact. So see, um, because I'm kind of angled up like this. Uh, my LD uh, is lifting me up, and so the time to impact stopped decreasing substantially. So you can see I hit this really high peak acceleration, and I usually don't hit quite that high of an acceleration because usually my lift drag is, is a bit um, higher, and so rather than actually getting as low as I ended up doing, the lift I produce raises my periapsis while I'm hitting the atmosphere. Um, this might actually give me more control. That's going to be a huge problem because to carry out a Mars Direct mission, I need to land two craft 
quite close to each other. Like think about in the Martian. So there's the MAV, which which is the ascent vehicle they use, and then there's the habitation, you know, all the hardware they use to, to live and stay there for a while. They need to land two craft close to each other, and I plan to do something similar because Mars Direct calls for something similar. Um, so that's going to be a huge challenge. I might actually need to learn uh, or you know borrow some chaos code to, to help control that, but it's going to be really challenging because most of the control I expect to derive will be from just you know this, this the roll control and stuff, and it kind of has to pre-calculate, estimate where I'm going to land. So that'll be a whole separate set of challenges. So originally I intend to address the challenges of just landing something big like this on Mars uh, successfully, um, and then the the ISRU side of things. So I'll definitely show that off more. Uh, that'll you'll see a number of that hardware, a lot of that hardware inside this shell um, when it, I open it up. So I'm watching for about 40 seconds. Uh, so I have, because the surface of Mars is, I think I had that in here. Mm, do I have the time to show that off? Yes, I think so. Okay. It's got a lot of different height differences. So if I hover a mouse over, uh, hmm, that actually seems, I can really just customize how this uh, appears. Hmm, it's actually kind of, it's actually broken right now, unfortunately. It's not showing off right. Every, all these terrain heights are showing about the same, and I'm unsure why. It might be because I just kind of refreshed my uh, RSS um, install files. But anyway, I wanted to show off that a number of points on Mars are very high. So the higher they are, like, uh, let's see, oh, a lot of them are in, uh, on, the, on the night side right now, but here you can see these kind of mountains or you know, very high points on Mars. This is a very low point on Mars. And so I want to land in an area like this because then I get the most uh, atmosphere value to, uh, uh, to slow down my craft descent. And so that's why, right, I was mentioning that. So here you'll see, you know, you'll see this altitude, but in MechJeb I've showing off both of these. Wow, see I'm used to kind of doing this with a higher lift drag, but also I was just doing some really rough tests near the Martian equator. So this is actually a quite low point on Mars, this Hellas Basin I'm descending into. So uh, let's see, so I'm actually still tw you know, 20 some kilometers above the surface of Mars, and I'm already slowed down to about what Mach, yeah, just under Mach 3. Um, I guess that's Mach, the speed of sound on Mars? I don't actually know. I usually, I would actually think of this as just two times uh, two Mach, but I guess FAR calculates whatever the speed of sound is on Mars as well, or, or just has it in there. Um, but the atmosphere is really starting to thicken up. You can see, actually I've got two displays of it, it in Pascals and sort of as a fraction. If this was one, that would be the surface of Earth. So yeah, I'm slowing down really substantially, so this craft is becoming quite wobbly. So I'm still like supersonic, still pretty fast, but I've lost so just using just this heat shield, a little bit of a blader, and a little bit of an off-center center of mass, a payload that was stable forward, and I confess at the moment in all this testing I am cheating a little bit with a, see I still have just the basic reaction wheel in this SSTU thing. But you could use a different reaction wheel or anything, I'm just using it for testing. In my final craft of course I plan to have to control everything with just RCS, which will be a bit more challenging, but you know, address one problem at a time where it's impossible, because I've tried to do this a number of times in the past, but now I'm trying to address, address all these challenges kind of one at a time, and I've, you know, done things I had never been able to do before when I was trying to do everything, so. So I've slowed down to, you know, relatively slow, time to impact. If I just do nothing, I'm going to smash into the surface in a minute. So, um, uh, God help me, time to drop this heat shield. So, I have these solids, so I've got everything staged, so hopefully everything goes well here. Wish me luck. Okay, everything kind of popped off, so that's good. Oh god, no, that did not work. So I just blipped my engines on. My engines currently don't have an effect. Uh, one of those uh, lovely things that I have to fix on. It's because of the, I'm kind of using these little custom methane thrusters for my craft. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to turn them off. I gave them uh, 10 restarts because, you know, you don't want to, you wouldn't want to put in all of this effort in, a, in reality and end up... <laughs> crashing into the surface of Mars because you didn't have enough ignitions. But again, that's something I'll try to make a little, if, if, it, if need be, more realistic um, before I actually carry out the mission. Um, so suicide burn, um, you know, I want this to come down to about zero. So right now I am you know, spending fuel, yeah, I am spending quite a bit of fuel. I'm not sure why the time to impact went came up, or maybe I just 
did it at a point uh, different than I normally do. Um, so there's all kinds of hardware I have in this, and I'll, I'll, be, I'll briefly describe it on my next video. I think I'll record that shortly after this one, since thankfully it looks like it's actually going fairly successfully. Um, and in testing like this, I've done this a lot of times, you shouldn't feel bad in testing. Uh, HyperEdit, amazing tool. Um, I could, I've often even just, so let's say I wanted to guarantee a good landing here without you know, all this crazy testing I'm doing. So I would, um, so turn on MechJab Lander, make sure I have it set to Mars, because that's where I want to be. Current will pip, uh, peg in my current lat and long. Um, you can even just do this from orbit. And then I usually set it to like 20,000 kilometers, let it load, 2,000, 1,000, whatever, as I, as I come down. Uh, and then I just click landing and it kind of floats you down, you know, kind of nulls out gravity or something. Uh, and then I could just orient it up. And that's good for testing out your hardware, see if it can ascend from Mars or if it's going to do what you'd expect it to do on Mars. Just really useful tools for testing. Uh, I do want to throw some effects on this just because it'll let me know whether I actually am generating thrust. Um, so still, don't need the suicide burn. Hmm, it looks like I'm generating, because the atmosphere is so thick here, um, I'm just so not used to this, it's actually slowing it down quite well on its own. So without the shell, I'm kind of curious, you guys who actually design airplanes might know what way more of these values mean, but my ballistic coefficient is pretty high. I know that's a, a good thing in this instance. I want the air to be slowing me down, so that's that's good. So 16 seconds to the ground. See, the reason why my suicide burner just um, isn't coming up really high is because, I, my, because of these engines, I've put them on here to lift this craft once it's quite heavy later on, they're really overpowered for what I'm having them do right now, just as using them as descent engines. And in fact, I'm burning so much fuel, I might actually run out of fuel before I get to the surface. Oh, suicide, oh, nope. Uh, see, this is something that, um, you know, Sarbian does, uh, makes amazing advances in how MechJeb works for real, uh, real solar system and realism overhaul. Sometimes it's just a little uncertain about what's going on. Um, Oh, I think I lost a radiator. <laughs> That's because the engines throttle down to zero, and the engines, compared to the kind of regular engines in Kerbal Space Program, behave quite strangely. Oh, so I'm about to land. So I'm just kind of throttling this because I want that to be closish to zero, because negative is a bad thing. Um, but the air drag kind of makes this an estimation at best. And once this gets close to zero, I will. Geez, I'll throttle up and then point my spacecraft up as this comes down to zero. Whoop, and I floated it. All right. That's okay. I've got excess ignitions, so I'll touch down. Kind of because the, the surface is blurry, it's, I find it a bit tricky. But there, so there we go. Uh, entry, descent, and landing. By no means goes that smooth <laughs> every time. I recommend a bit higher of an LD than I used there, but in the next video I'll show off some of the subsystems I have here because this craft, as you see, it, it landed on Mars at about 12, about 13 tons, and that was that was an honest landing. That that's better than that's more than I uh, usually do. I brought a bit of methane and liquid oxygen from Earth um, to actually do this. I will need a bus attached to this craft probably to control it, give it solar power during the coast, uh, and to run the cryogenics to actually keep these fuels uh, chilled. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, that was Mars Entry Descent.